Hello, welcome to the first episode of Let's Live Code. In this video series, I will demo a live coding session from scratch using SuperCollider that focuses in on a certain aspect of live coding. I'm going to assume familiarity with the basics of SuperCollider, such as evaluating code, architecture, etc., to help keep the focus on creating sound. So let's live code, shall we? There are many different approaches to live coding in SuperCollider, so for this first video, what I wanted to do was focus in on a basic framework that we can use and future installments elaborate on it. This framework comprises of three main sections. One, the synth definition, or the recipes for sounds. Two, the audio processing, or some sort of busing that we can control the audio processing with. And three, a system for reading these synth defs into patterns, and we'll do that through the help of our friend, pbinddef. So as you can already see, I've started creating the first part of the process, which is creating a synth def, or a recipe for our sound. Uh, this first synth def is named sine. It's going to be a simple sine wave that we can control the pitch, attack, and release of the sound. It's remarkable how much variation and mileage you can get out of a simple attack and release. Later I'm going to go to clear these as arguments so I can have access to them uh, when we use them in the patterns. When I write code, I generally write from the outside to the inside. I have no idea if other people do this, but it's one of those little tricks that help me stay focused on which level I'm coding. So you may have noticed when I started this synth def, I started with the um, two parentheses, put some space in between there, the synthdef.new, uh, the name, and then so on and so on. If you've worked with uh, Super Collider before, or really any coding environment, you may have had that feeling of extreme frustration when you spend 10 minutes or so setting up your synthdef only to have your evaluation fail because you forgot to put a semicolon uh, somewhere, and then you have to go scour your code for that missing semicolon. Um, I also find that if you keep your code as clear as possible and comment your code out, that can really be a big time saver, especially if you're coming back to code um, that you wrote a long time ago and you're trying to figure things out. Of course, this may seem obvious, but believe me, you can save yourself a lot of headaches now if you follow those simple rules. Now that I have my sig and my onv declared, I am putting in starting values for my attack and release times. Uh, in this case, we are going to go ahead and start with something that has a very short attack and a medium release. All of these values are in milliseconds, so an attack time of 2 milliseconds and a release time of 200 milliseconds. This is going to be a mono signal to start, um, so we're going to use the Ugen Pan 2, uh, which is an audio rate moving uh, Ugen. Uh, this is going to let us control where in the stereo field the sound is going to be coming from. So for instance, let's say we set the position of the argument and we want it to be hard left, then the value we would use for hard left would be negative 1. If we wanted uh, the sound to come out of the hard right speaker, then that would be 1. So anywhere between 1 and negative 1 is the range that we'll be using, which is why um, setting the argument to 0 is going to be equally coming out of the left and right speakers. Finally, when it's all said and done, we are going to pipe the sound out of our sound card using the out ugen. Uh, here we are going to declare a variable um, so that we can pipe the sound out to a different bus, like an effect bus. And all I have to do now is simply add it, uh, make sure I have my parentheses, and evaluate the code. And if everything goes well, which it did, um, you should see a synth def in your postscript window. And now all I have to do to record it is put server.default.record, start it, and then in the Super Collider Recordings folder on my hard drive, um, I can access the folder anytime I want to. And we can test the synth out with synth.new, um, and you put the name of the synth, test it, and... And now we had uh, four minutes of coding for two bleeps. All right, so let's move on to the next part of the process. Um, that will be to create a synth stuff that can handle our audio processing. And we are going to go ahead and put this in the same brackets that is our sine wave. And that way we can evaluate them simultaneously. Um, the synth def that we're going to be using is called FX. And the first part of the synth def is going to be the Eugen in that, uh, dot AR, which moves at the audio rate. Um, and we are going to hard code in to bus 20. Now you may want to assign a variable at this point um, so you can change where the audio processing is happening. But for now, um, I have no need to go ahead and change the audio processing. It's easy enough for me to remember that bus 20 is where things are happening at. So I have no need to change it. And there are two primary audio processing UGENs uh, that we are passing through. Uh, we'll be going through some reverberation and a resonant low pass filter. Some really boilerplate standard audio processing stuff. 
Uh, we are also going to stick to the default settings for the G verb Eugen uh, for no other reason than I played with the variables and discovered that the default settings were actually really interesting and actually pretty dynamic. Uh, go figure. However, I did not find that was the case uh, for the resonant low pass filter. So in this case, we are going to declare two variables, uh, one so we can control the frequency of the cutoff, and two so we can control the reciprocal quality amount of the filter, um, which is the RQ that you see up in the arguments. And so now I am going to go ahead and add those variables to the resonant low pass filter. And the final thing that we're going to put is an out eugen, and that way I can declare that the signal is going to come out um, buzz zero, or the left and right speakers that we have immediately to it. I'm going to go ahead and add it, and put a bracket around and evaluate it. And if all goes well, you'll see a synth def again, just like before. Great, so now most of our recipes are actually done, or at least for the synth def portion of it. I'm going to go ahead and copy these over, and that way I can just kind of re-change uh, these values. Instead of a sine wave, I can add a square wave. Um, and with the square wave now, I can also add an extra argument to change the pulse width modulation of that square wave. And we will do that through the argument PWM. And instead of a sine wave, we're going to go ahead and make a saw wave. And I can do simply change the sine um, osc to saw.ar. And now that I have all of that, I should be able to have my sine wave, square wave, and solid tooth wave. And let me go ahead and test that with synth.new. Um, saw. I can easily change saw to square and test that one out as well. At this point there really is no more need to have our synth defs up so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them uh, just for the sake of space so we're able to go ahead and see everything. We are gonna go ahead and be able to change our audio processing through the set message. So eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the audio processing to X and use x.set to be able to change the frequency and the reciprocal quality of the filter. I did this a little bit backwards as I'm going through it, um, but we can set that synth or the audio processing to x by saying x equals synth.new and then the name um, of your synth processing, in this case fx. And now I can set it um, dynamically as things come in there. One of the beautiful parts about playing with patterns and streams in Super Collider is that we can set multiple patterns to different tempi throughout a session. Now every session has a different default tempo um, associated with it. In fact, there has been a tempo in the background running um, with this session ever since we booted the server. We can change the default tempo um, by sending tempo clock .default tempo and setting it equal to whatever tempo we would like it to be in beats per minute over 60. So you can see now that the tempo that we're going to be running at is going to be 132 beats per minute. And as you can probably already see, I have started doing the third part of our live coding session, uh, which is introducing the thing that's going to play our synth stuffs back in a pattern, and that um, is the pbinddef.new that we're using. It requires basically a name for the stream that you're going to be running. In this case, we're going to be running something called play1. Um, the instrument that it's going to be playing is the sine, which means it's their sine wave. Uh, we're going to add the duration of the note, so it's going to be doing half of the note that you would normally be seeing. So it would be doing eighth notes at 132. Um, and then with MIDI note, what we're going to be doing is setting a sequence of MIDI notes uh, that we can play back in sort of this pattern. So you can see 60, 67, 77, 96, 72, 48, 65, 96, 72, 79, and so on and so on. And the reason why we're doing this pattern um, is because it's going to be playing sort of the sequence back. That's a C major sequence. Anytime we want to sequence an event in P bind def, the object that we have to use is the pseq object, and uh, with that sequence of events, the MIDI notes that we're detailing, we have to say how many times we wanted to do that. So you can say I want to do it three times or four times, or I can do it an infinite amount of times so I don't have to keep on saying, please keep on playing this pattern. The pan position is going to be controlled by pwhite, which means a random event that's distri distributed over white noise. Um, it's going to randomly go from negative one to one, so it's going to randomly choose between the left and right speaker. A volume is going to be scaled back a little bit at 0.04. Now that could be variable depending on what your system is. We're going to start with a very short attack and a sort of medium release. 
The final object that we're going to actually uh, play with here in the pbind def is going to be our out. And right now I'm just setting that out to be zero. And we can hit play. And we can choose the quant or the position of the measure where we want it to start. In this case, we're going to start with one. Uh, we load all of that up. And all we have to do is evaluate it to get some sound. And just to recap, what's going to happen then when we evaluate this is that it's going to go through these MIDI notes and it's going to have eighth notes at 132. So obviously that pattern is going to be playing continuously. If there was a note in there that I didn't want it to play in that pattern, all I have to do actually is replace that note with a slash notation. And now um, when Super Collider reads that, it's going to read that. You can use any symbol actually that would um, Super Collider would understand it and it would skip over those. Now would be a better time than ever to go ahead and check to make sure that the audio processing is actually working. So all I have to do in order to check that is to change the out now to bus 20, which is where our processing happens. And I can use the set message now to change the values of that processing. So it's not um, great to have synth defs that we're not using. Let's go ahead and copy this p-bind def to go ahead and bring in our sine wave and our square wave. Um, to do this though, we are need to change the name. In this case, we need to change it to play one to play two. And I also want to add an argument for the pulse width modulation so that this can change over time as well. And now that that seems to be going well, let's go ahead and go to the middle P bind def and change that from play one to play three and change the instrument name from sine wave to saw wave so we can get our sawtooth wave going as well. Lastly, I do want to show that you can actually um, offset the amount of the MIDI pattern simply by adding or subtracting semitones. Um, this can help you change keys, go into different directions, and actually spread the width of it right now so you should have the same pattern that's happening much lower. Right, from here we have all of our variables that we're going to set. I'm just going to keep on evaluating them over time and creating a piece of music out of them.
Okay, and if you want to stop the recording of the session, all you have to do is hit Command P. If you're curious about where to find your recording, all you have to do is go to your hard drive, at least on a Mac you do, uh, go in the search bar and type Super Collider Recordings. Of course, uh, to do this, you actually have to be able to spell the word Super Collider in recordings, of which I don't, and then I will do right there. Okay. Good, so that will do it for this episode. Um, let me know what you think of it. Hit me up in the comments. Um, if you have death threats, hate mail, something like that, go ahead and send it to me. Um, but I hope to see you again on the next episode of Let's Live Code.